but that's the uh, the 20 acre track there on the left going out. Long work. Yeah, it's one. one. And it's just wind. We need to vote on these? Yes. I was looking at that clock. All right, I'm going to bring a uh, call to order the uh, October 9th, 2014 Farragut Beer Board. We have a fairly short agenda this evening. Uh, the first item is approval of the minutes from September 11th. Does anybody have any comments or corrections to the minutes? I have read them and found them to be in order. I'll make a motion that we approve them. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the minutes are approved. The uh, next item is a beer permit approval. Approval of a class two on-premise other permit for Echelon Bicycles 138 West End Avenue. Yes sir, this will be the first request for this class of permits. The Board of Mayor and Aldermen revised the beer permit ordinance in May of 2014 to allow for additional classes of permits. The class two on-premise permit is for other established establishments making application for a permit to sell beer for consumption on the premises which do not qualify or do not wish to qualify for the class one on-premise permit but which otherwise meets all the regulations and restrictions in the chapter to qualify for the class two on-premise permit the establishment must in addition to the other regulations um, <coughs> generate a minimum of 95 percent of the gross revenues of the establishment from sales other than alcoholic beverages the reporting procedures will be similar to what we have right now with the restaurant 6040 um, reporting. That will be done in, on or before June um, 30th of that particular year. The permit holder will submit copies of the state sales tax with the appropriate documentation and we should and we'll keep those records on file. And the motion is to approve the class 2 on-premise other permit for Echelon bikes at 138 West End Avenue. Okay, thank you. Is there any uh, questions for the applicant, or does the applicant have anything they'd like to say to the board? Go to the podium. Give us your name and address. The, the oh, podium. You have to go over here. There you go. People wait their whole life to get behind that, so it's your moment. It's my second time. Hi, my name is Kelly Ham. I'm uh, president of uh, Echelon Bikes, Echelon Incorporated. And uh, yeah, I suppose. Um, since our initial uh, attendance of the meeting back in November of 2013, um, asking that uh, the beer board look at the uh, an ordinance uh, amendment or change the ordinance uh, to allow uh, establishments like ours to sell beer. Um, the only question I think I have at this point uh, is I think, Allison, I heard you say that the um, sales would be uh, limited to uh, five percent of the uh, overall sales so um, I guess doing the, the quick math on that um, based on our what we know of now as as having been our sales for the past year which were just a little under five hundred thousand I guess that puts us at twenty five thousand I haven't done the 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 math on that number um, let me ask you since I have the opportunity um, what if uh, if that were to I mean I guess I'm wondering if if per I don't. I haven't looked at the numbers enough to to see how likely it might be that we would get close to that number. But if we did, can you talk a little bit, perhaps, about how I would need to handle that? I will have to look that one up. We've not had anybody go over on the restaurant sixty forty ratio. Okay. Most of them don't come close to it. Okay. So let me look into that and get back with you on okay. that portion. I will also do do a little uh, calculating on that and I, I have no idea if uh, if that's even a reasonable question for me to ask at this point so uh, but thought I would since I was here but I think that's the only question I really have to ask about it right now yep thank you thank you thanks any other comments from the board or questions all right is there a motion 
Motion to approve the uh, beer permit for Echelon Bicycles. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Congratulations. Thanks for being in our community. Uh, with that, I'll bring to close the Farragut Beer Board for October 9th, 2014. And on that note, this is now the Farragut Board of Mayor and Alderman meeting for October 9th, 2014. We'll start by rising for a moment of silent prayer, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. We do have a quorum, although uh, Alderman LaMarche could not be here tonight, um, but we will proceed. Uh, next item is approval of the agenda. It's rather short. I'll move for approval. Second. Alderman, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, we need before, to you, before you jump into there, we, we would request that we uh, delete item 6B1 right. from the agenda, and we'll bring that to you at the next meeting. Yeah, I right. will... Uh, I will amend uh, my motion to approve with uh, the deletion of uh, 6B1 then. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Next is the mayor's report. I'm happy to report that we just opened a new uh, bit of our um, trails with it making a connection down with Went in Wentworth uh, across the creek, Little Turkey Creek, so that now you can go walk from uh, McPhee Park all the way to Leonard Park all on trails uh, and our goal is and you probably know is to be able to walk from anywhere in Farragut to anywhere else uh, it's a long process but we're getting there um, I think that's all I have to report the next is a citizens forum mayor may, may I make a sure quick comment um, I would just like to take a moment and, and uh, recognize uh, a member of our community that passed away in the last week and that's Dan Olson you know Dan uh, Dan was a friend of mine personally and a former town administrator and, and uh, quite frankly he did a lot of good things for this town and I want to take a moment to recognize that you know when I became a member of this community and got involved as a uh, volunteer uh, committee member Dan reached out to me walked me through a lot of processes and educated me and I was just always very grateful for that so I just want to take a moment and uh, recognize his service to our community. Thank you. Thanks. Citizens Forum. No one has signed up. All right, approval of minutes from September 25th. I'll move for approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? We move to ordinances. The first one is uh, public notice and second reading, ordinance 14-11, ordinance to amend the text of the Zoning Ordinance of the Town of Farragut, Tennessee, Ordinance 86-16, as amended by amending Chapter 3, Section 11, Multifamily <coughs> Residential District, R6, by providing for new requirements as authorized pursuant to Section 13-4-201, Tennessee Code Annotated. Yes, sir. This is, um, we, we, as you all are well aware, and we had a very lengthy meeting um, on September 11th to review all three of these ordinances that the Planning Commission has been looking at um, since May to, um, <coughs> pardon me, to really um, amend and bring up to date um, with our um, adopted land use plan and our strategic plan a need for greater housing choice within the community. Mm -hmm. um, from that ordinance 1411, 1412, and 1413 um, that are on your agenda tonight for second reading um, are really an effort to update the zoning ordinance. So with 1411, it amends the existing R6 um, 
and throughout <coughs> pardon me um, again discussed at length um, both the strategic plan and the comprehensive land use plan um, have language to address the greater housing choice um, providing for more housing choices within that would also um, strengthen the local economy and those being goal two of the strategic plan um, and goal four objectives four and five and then also the um, comprehensive land use plan since the September 11th meeting um, ordinance 1411 does remain unchanged and staff would recommend approval of ordinance 1411 on second reading I would like to move for approval second all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. Any opposed next one is similar ordinance dash 14 14 dash 12 ordinance to amend the text of the zoning ordinance of the town of Farragut Tennessee ordinance 86 dash 16 as amended by amending chapter 3's uh, specific district regulations to create a new zoning district entitled open space multifamily residential overlay as authorized pursuant to section 13-4201 Tennessee code annotated 14 ordinance 1412 um, really came about to provide more flexibility for building placement um, in exchange for setting aside a large amount of open space and and with this common open space being 50 percent with this overlay the town has had a lot of popularity with our other two overlay districts the OSR and the OSMR um, and the Planning Commission as they went through this process really felt that it would be a good application in the multifamily setting um, there is an amendment as it relates to ordinance 1412 it is highlighted in your packet um, in with some red text within the ordinance itself but it's um, there was a gentleman here at the September 11th that had some comments as it related to the um, maintenance of common open space as it within this overlay district and we've afforded for additional language that will provide for maintenance within the common open space areas in areas that are not deemed environmentally sensitive um, so based on the, the comments and the revision to ordinance 1412 um, staff would recommend um, approval of ordinance 1412 as amended I'll move for approval second all in favor say aye aye, aye. any opposed third one is also similar ordinance 14-13 ordinance to amend the text of the zoning ordinance the town of Farragut Tennessee ordinance 86-16 as amended by amending chapter 4 section 20 parking and loading a 2 and 3 to change the off street parking provisions for multi-family uses again this is a part of this whole process that that we have been through to update the zoning ordinance as it relates to multifamily and the other element being the parking um, consistent this is to provide consistent language with ordinance 1411 and 1412 as it relates to the setback of parking areas um, it also reduces the number of parking spaces related to multifamily um, less asphalt more green space which is also provided for in the comprehensive land use plan and the strategic plan um, to have a more aesthetically pleasing development and parking area there are no changes to ordinance 1413 from first reading um, and staff would recommend approval of ordinance 1413 I'll move for approval second all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. any opposed <laughs> next is ordinance uh, 14-15 ordinance to amend ordinance 14-06 FY 2015 general fund budget yes sir this will this um, budget amendment will be allocating additional expenditures for the purpose of paying back the mixed drink taxes received since 1999 to the Knox County Schools the agreement um, has stipulated 
that the town would pay $1.1 million, which, which represents 50% of the revenues collected from the mixed drink tax from 1999 to 2013. This amount will be paid out in installments over a three-year period, with each installment being $368,943. In the fiscal year 2015 budget, the town has already allocated $100,000 for this payment, making the necessary budget amendment total of $268,943. Funding for this additional expense will be transferred from the general fund reserves, and the formal settlement has been um, has been approved. The motion is to approve ordinance fourteen fifteen on second and final reading. You know, I, I would like to uh, first of all, I want to thank our town administrator and our town attorney for the the great job they did with this, and I, and I also want to extend a. A thank you to the Knox County School Board as well as the Knox County Commission for having a, a sense of reasonableness and in, in working with us so I think at the end of the day we've we've done a good job we've been fair uh, on both sides so I, I wanted to state that and uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve unless there's any other discussion well said on that Alderman Hon Alderman Honkin and I would like to second that <laughs> <All right. coughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> Next item then is uh, business items. Uh, and there's only one approval of settlement and release agreement with Knox County Schools. Thank you, Mayor. We, uh, the board just uh, approved uh, amending our budget in order to put money in to pay these schools for uh, the first year's payment. I know the board is well aware of this subject and, and what we've been talking about the last several months for, for the public and uh, those that may be watching at home. I just wanted to give a, kind of a little background on this. You know, back in 1987, the town of Farragut began collecting mixed drink taxes. And at that time, the state of Tennessee started giving those revenues directly to uh, the town of Farragut. Um, so if you fast forward to the fall of 2013, uh, Farragut, along with 41 other cities across the state, all were, uh, were uh, notified by the state that we may need to go back and look at uh, the possible revenues that we had received, and that part of those revenues may need to be going to our local school systems. So there's been a lot of discussion back and forth. There was a uh, legislation that was approved last year by the Tennessee General Assembly that laid out a lot of parameters around where we could uh, negotiate with the school system and work out an agreement, which is exactly what we have been able to do. And I really thank uh, our town attorney, Tom Hale, for helping us uh, get, get to this point that we're at today. Um, what we have done is offered the schools and the Knox County government, because the money will actually go to Knox County government and then be remitted to the school system from the, from the government, but uh, we've offered to pay back the schools from 1999 to 2013 in three equal installments of $368,943, which comes out to $1,106,829. Well, $1, um, the school board, Knox County School Board, has already accepted that uh, proposal, as well as Knox County Commission. So it's now back to the Board of Mayor and Aldermen with the settlement agreement before you to approve that and then uh, we can get this uh, litigation and everything else hopefully wrapped up here soon. So we would certainly uh, recommend approval. I'll move for approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, that brings us to town administrator's report. Wow. Mayor, a um, couple things we want to talk to you about tonight. Um, We've been working, and, and again, Town Attorney Tom Hale has been working diligently the last uh, couple of years on trying to acquire a right-of-way along Everett Road. It's a major project for us in this year's CIP. Uh, it's roughly $3.5 million. We have budgeted to do construction of Everett Road from uh, Union Road all the way up to the entrance to Split Rail Farm. Uh, most of the tracts of land that we have been purchasing have all been uh, relatively small, uh, under $10,000 purchases. Uh, we do have two pr uh, purchases of land, though, that on the two biggest tracks that are still left. One is the Longworth property, and uh, this property uh, is being proposed to be purchased at $55,835. This is the right-of-way construction easements uh, and slope easements that we would need for that property. Um, since this is over $10,000, I wanted to bring this before the board to get you to 
hopefully approve the um, the amount so that way we can execute that and go ahead and purchase that property uh, the second property is just to the north of that and that's the Quinn property uh, it involves two different parcels and it's it's you'll see this property come up again probably in the next month or so uh, this this amount is fifteen thousand four hundred eighty nine dollars and two cents that is actually f uh, to the bank that owns the lien on the property or the mortgage on the property uh, and then we'll be settling up hopefully with the property owner uh, here before too long so uh, what we request to the board tonight is to approve both of these right-of-way acquisitions and uh, mr. Hale again has been involved in this uh, from the get-go and he can answer any kind of specific questions you may have about either of those items I, I think I'm following you on on the long worth but I'm help me with the uh, this other one I'm, I'm and maybe I missed something I apologize I see the the 15,000 and change to, to BB and T and then we have the other amount um, that goes to is it Buster Quinn yes the the uh, <coughs> what happens in these in all of these acquisitions which actually is the bane of our existence on these projects is that they're mortgage companies that have mortgages on the properties okay. and so I'm with you. when we acquire right-of-way they have an interest in that right-of-way that we acquire and you have to get releases from them in order to have a clear title so unfortunately today we don't deal with just the local banks yeah. We have to deal with Citibank and all these people in California, and so trying to get a release from them is just unbelievable. You have to get appraisals done, and in this case, which is somewhat unusual on the Quinn property, the we didn't even, the, the, Mr. Quinn actually refinanced his property when we were in midstream. We had already contacted his original bank <laughs> And they called back and said, we don't even have a mortgage on this property anymore. It's been refinanced. So we then contacted the next bank, and they, they did an appraisal of the value of what we were taking of their property. And they are requiring that the 15000 amount be paid to them in order to give us a release <coughs> of their lien or their mortgage on that portion of the property. So that's the reason we can't close with the Quinns until we get we get a release from the mortgage holder okay. so that's what we're doing with that amount of money and the, and the Quinns I think the you'll see uh, when this was done it was done way back in the beginning of this project I think it was in actually finally agreed to in 2009 is when the agreement yeah. was reached about the value of what was being taken and as you can probably see from what I've submitted to you there was a little damage to the remainder of the property I think because it gets a little the road gets a little close to the house and uh, so there are a number of factors on that one there's a permanent drainage easement involved on that one <coughs> there's just some unique things and that sort of drove the value up a little bit and then the Longworth property is property that it's probably the largest one of the largest of all the properties that we have uh, had to take a little sliver off the front and uh, they agreed to accept what our appraiser uh, appraised it for back in the day when the appraisals were originally done it just took us a while to work through some of the details on re repositioning the driveway and we're, we're, we're needing to move the driveway on the Longworth property because it it sort of is on the down slope and we need to move it up to where it, when they pull out of their driveway they're at the top of the rise so that you know that it's a little safer gotcha. situation and so that took a little bit of extra doing so on the on the Quinn property I thank you very much for that explanation on the Quinn property the amount going to the bank comes out of the total amount that we That's agreed right. okay it, I just wanted to make sure it wasn't an addition to no it. no okay no. all right thank you David do you need two separate motions or just one for both just one's fine yeah well, also, it looks to me like we're actually acquiring more 
area on the Longworth property has more frontage, does it not? I would. I would think it would. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. It's a longer tract of land. So it's 50, yeah. fifty-five thousand for that one, and eighty thousand for a smaller one. I'm just. Uh, I think the difference is, Alderman Markley, is that is the damage to the remainder. That's a component of when, when the road gets closer to the house, then there was no damage to the remainder on Longworth because there, there's a house, but it's way back off the road. So what they do is in their appraisal, they, they assess an amount. And I think in this situation, the amount assessed for damage to the remainder was a little over $12,000. <clears throat> Usually we don't have damage to the remainder. The last time we had it was over on um, McPhee Road. There are a couple of houses on McPhee Road right there when you turn off of Old Stage on the right that are pretty close to the road. Mm. We paid some pretty hefty damage to the remainders on, on those. But that's the only time I can remember we ever had much in the way of damage to the remainder. Mm. I'll, uh, I'll make a motion for payment in the agreed upon amount on the Quinn property and the Longworth property. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 And opposed? Thank you, Mayor. A couple other things we've got uh, going on around town. First of all, this weekend on Saturday, we have the Chamber 5K run. It's going to be held at Mayor Bob Leonard Park uh, starting off at 8 o'clock. I don't know if, Mayor, are you shooting the gun this year? Yeah. All right, so we're going to have the runners starting at 8 o'clock right there at the corner of Kingston Pike and, uh, and uh, Watt Road. So that should be a great event. Also, next Saturday, uh, on the October the 18th, there's the Fire Prevention Fall Festival. Rural Metro puts that on. Colin Cumnesty, he's one of our fire uh, inspectors here with the town and with Rural Metro. And that's a great event in front of Turkey Creek Medical Center in the parking lot out there. You'll see helicopters, all sorts of fire trucks, and equipment, <laughs> rescue vehicles and stuff. That's going on from 10 to 2. And then you'll, you'll hear about this again, but it's the, one of our bigger events that the town hosts throughout the year. And that's Freaky Friday. It's going to be on Friday, October the 24th from 5 to 7 at Mayor Bob Leonard Park. And it's all, if, if the weather's nice, it's going to be a packed house. So uh, we're looking forward to getting that ready as well. And Sue and her staff uh, always do a great job with that. That's all I have to report tonight, Mayor. <coughs> I was wondering on that Farragut Fall 5K, if I could maybe trade places with the mayor. I'll shoot the gun and he can run the 5K. Is that, uh, could we? Uh, um, <laughs> we'd have to talk. <laughs> 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 um, well, the other thing that's happening this weekend is uh, it's now called Lender Fest, October Fest. Uh, same place as last two times. That will probably do well. Town Attorney's Report. No report tonight. Okay, we are adjourned.